Hello and welcome to another one of my videos about Reaper. This time it's about remapping Reaper's measure grid to music which had been recorded previously without any metronome click. As always with Reaper you have several different ways to accomplish the same task, but I will show a procedure which seems to me to be very easy to learn and very quick also. So here we have an acoustic guitar recording from Stefan. He played the whole track without any metronome. But we would like to facilitate to edit it later and maybe add some VST sounds to it. And therefore we need the grid to follow the music. First thing to do is to find out the tempo of the music. In other words, the beats per minute or BPM. For now, Reaper is still set to its default BPM value, which is 120. I have recorded the guitar with four microphones into a four-channel wave file. First two channels are a mid-side stereo setup, and the third and the fourth track build an XY stereo setup. Unfortunately, the waveform of this guitar recording doesn't provide a lot of peaks because it was just picked very smoothly, so we don't have a good visual orientation of where beats are. First, we need to find out the general tempo of this recording. For this, I make a time selection of one bar. First beat is located just after the waveform becomes visible. And here we have the next downbeat. This is all about finding the rough tempo of the track. Absolute precision is not really important now. Having set the time selection to approximately one measure, we open up the action list and try to find an action that can measure the tempo from the length of this time selection. This is the one we need. As I did also, you might assign a keyboard shortcut to it, if you are using it regularly. I now run this action and we find tempo markers with the tempo that Reaper has detected for this bar, which is around 83 beats per minute. Now that we have found out about the tempo of the song, we can undo the last step and we can set the project tempo to the 83 BPM. I now turned on snapping and I will insert a tempo marker with a value of 83. I now turn off snapping to align the first downbeat at the first grid line. I engage the click to see if the downbeat is right on. of the guitar is now drifting apart from the click. We now need two actions from the action list and these are not native Reaper actions but instead come with the SWS extension pack. If you haven't yet done so, please google SWS extensions for Reaper you have to download the package corresponding to your operating system and then install that package. On a Windows computer, the SWS extension goes right into the Reaper program folder. Once you have installed SWS extensions, you can find the two actions that we need, one of which I assigned to my comma key and the other one to the dot key. 
I'm pressing the comma to identify the first action we need. There it is. It will move the closest grid line to the mouse cursor as soon as we press the comma key and we'll keep on readjusting the position of the grid line as long as we keep holding the comma key. We will use this action to insert new tempo markers on downbeats. I'm now hitting the dot key to find the associated action. This action will move the closest existing tempo marker to the mouse pointer and we will use it to correct their position. So tempo mapping in Reaper requires these two actions, one to readjust the grid line to the mouse pointer and the other one to reposition the closest tempo marker to the mouse pointer. So let's start inserting the first tempo marker at the first downbeat of the song, right after making sure to have the first downbeat exactly on a grid line. And I simply hit the comma key to insert the first tempo marker. Next we will locate the next downbeat of the song. Okay, here it is. Not too easy to spot in the waveform. Again I hit the comma key and we get a next tempo marker of 83 BPM. All newly inserted tempo markers will have a tempo of 83 BPM. However, the one before will change accordingly to the actual tempo of the time in between the two. Let's go ahead inserting a new tempo marker at the following downbeat. Right here, this one is easily visible. And we can also see the grid has been drifting away a little bit. So we hover the mouse pointer right above the downbeat and hit the comma key again. Let's zoom out to make the new tempo marker visible. And we see that the last measure had its own particular tempo. Let's find the next downbeat. This one is a little bit trickier because the waveform we see here is an offbeat before the actual downbeat occurs. The downbeat will be around here, so I press the comma key again. Let's introduce our second action, which we had assigned to the dot key. At least I have it assigned to the dot key. While this key is kept pressed down, it allows us to readjust the position of the marker without affecting previous or later markers. Let's see if I've hit the actual downbeat. I think I can reposition the marker even better. I'll be zooming out a little to show you that this marker correction is only affecting the last marker and not the previous marker and not the audio. Okay, next downbeat. This one is easy to spot and we need the comma key to insert the next tempo marker. Let's listen to what we have now from the beginning. Something seems to be off a little around here. We'll take the dot key to readjust this marker here. Seems better now. And keep in mind, while we are readjusting markers with the dot key, we are not altering 
the tempo of the other markers around it. So the whole grid of what we have already achieved will remain. Watch what happens if I manipulate one of the markers. Here we have a marker that we already corrected, so it stayed where it was even though we corrected a previous marker. Next downbeat I position the mouse pointer and hit the comma key. Next one. You may have spotted already that the mouse pointer can be virtually anywhere with respect to the timeline when creating a new tempo marker. I will now insert the master track where we can see the tempo map with its light variations in the tempo. Let's take another example. Here I have Randy Crawford's You Might Need Somebody and apparently they didn't use a click while recording. Let's have a quick listen. Okay, let's try to find out the rough tempo of the song first. Here is the first downbeat. I'm making the time selection fit one measure. Let's do some fine-tuning here. And also at the start. Now we want to make Reaper create a measure from this time selection and also detect the tempo of this measure. There is an action especially for this task. I run this action and Reaper finds out the tempo of this area, which is around 80 BPM. I'm undoing this action and setting the project BPM to 80. However, what we can see is that changing the tempo of the project stretches the audio, but obviously this is not our goal. So if I open up the project settings we see here that time base is set to beats for audio items and also for markers. So I'm undoing the project tempo change and I'll be using an action which I assigned to a toolbar button here. The action changes the properties of this particular track to never alter the play rate of items which are on that track. Here's how to create or edit a custom toolbar button. You right click the toolbar area. Then you can either add a new toolbar button or edit an existing one. So clicking on my toolbar icon, I can make the items of the track not to time stretch on tempo changes. So let's change the project tempo to 80 BPM. And we can see that the audio hasn't been time stretched this time. I'm also setting the first project tempo marker to 80. Now I want to configure the pre roll of the song. I want the first downbeat to occur on marker 2 at time point 0. And I put marker 1 on bar 0. I turn off snapping and move the first downbeat exactly to the location of marker 2. Let's listen to this with the click enabled. The 
beginning is good, but it's quickly drifting apart. This time it helps that we have a better representation of the drum beats in the waveform, so it's really no problem to spot the downbeats. And I'll be using the comma key to position our first tempo marker. I think I put this one a little bit too early, so I'll be readjusting it with the dot key kept pressed down. Here we have the next downbeat, so I press the comma key again. Again here. Again here, it has drifted apart already. And once again here. So we see with such a file it's getting quite easy to spot the downbeats and one can advance quite quickly. I'll be now inserting a marker right in the middle of a measure to see what happens. Yeah, it works well. Here we have the next one. I'd like to readjust this one with the dot key. Okay, another one very early here. Okay, a couple of beats. Last one of the three is the actual downbeat. With this method it doesn't take too much time to get through a whole song and tempo map it. Let's open the view for the master track to get an overview over the tempo drift throughout the song. In this measure I inserted a supplementary tempo marker to compensate for the drift in the middle of the measure. There may be a little bit of a drift in the middle of this measure also. We can see it here. So I'll just add another tempo marker by positioning the mouse pointer and hitting the comma key. Yeah, that's much better now. Okay, this is time warping or tempo mapping in Reaper. Have fun tempo mapping and see you next time. Thanks for watching.